So this year, uh, issue is called The Hope Contained in Hopeless Times. And really for the, the victims to come to the Shabbos um, afternoon share as well. I mentioned I was going to do this in the Shabbos afternoon share, but when I started to look at it again, um, I mean the ones who don't sleep in. Um, <laughs> um, I was going to do this just as a sort of like a little insertion into the Shabbos afternoon share, but it's so big and so, so important. It really, really spoke to me. I thought we would do it here. In fact, the more I started to go into it, the more it turned into probably two sharing. And Moshe came in before. Moshe was awake, wasn't it? Moshe came in uh, before and he said, only three snoring, never be fooled by only three snoring. Um, so, and he said, the key, sir, uh, in when, I, when I lived in Gateshead, one of my great teachers was somebody called Rabbi Mordechai Miller. And Rabbi Mordechai Miller was the, uh, together with uh, Mr. Kahn, uh, were to meeting of Rabbi Dessler, who set up uh, Gateshead, called to the old seminary, because um, there's no new one. Um, run and founded by my dear and very close friend Rabbi, Rabbi Avon Katz. Anyway, the Gates of Gateshead, the classic Gateshead Seminary, uh, Rabbi Miller used to give the shear that he gave to the girls, he used to give them, I think it was a Wednesday night, I think, in the Kaulo. Gateshead Kaulo was also uh, founded by Rabbi Dessler. And so, on the Wednesday night, he used to give to the boys who were interested in Nashkov and Yonim, as I, you probably know, most of I am, um, used to give a shear, and it was mobbed, that room was, it was a shear room, and, and the cow was literally, he literally couldn't sit. And he always used to say about himself, Rabbi Mordechai Miller was a remarkably brilliant man, um, and a, a lovely dry sense of humor, and I was very, very deeply, deeply devoted to him. He used to say that he sees himself only as a, ca a cassette recorder, do you remember cassette recorders? Mm -hmm. <sighs> now we know we're going back to if you say cassette recorder. As a cassette recorder saying over the Torah of Rabbi Desta. So tonight she is basically the, the, the Torah of Rabbi Desta. I, I didn't know how to get in touch with you all. I don't know if you've got a mix of many all. Do you all have a mix of many all? Because Rabbi Desta used to say it to, to me that. Strong, strong to you. Yeah, that's in the English. Yeah. You, you, can, you can handle the Hebrew. Um, as he used to say to his Talmud, yeah. do you have two pairs of shoes? <laughs> right. so, yeah, you don't have a rabbi next <laughs> um, So that was the accusation. Anyway, so the kids here, um, Rabbi Nesla in his most famous, well, his most famous, one of his most famous in Yonin was, of course, his interest in Bechira. I remember, I think he's wrote in through now six volumes of Mitzvah Milio. I should tell you, incidentally, there's enough material for 12 volumes of Mitzvah Milio. Are they keeping the more difficult stuff for you know for later? Um, but I'm not sure now who's in charge of that whole project uh, because Maria Kaplan, who was in charge of it, sadly left her. So I don't know if we're going to see him anymore or any more. Anyway, soft call soft. Um, Rabbi Dessler is one of his famous in Yonim is his Bechira, his dealing with Bechira. And it, I think there's five essays in the six published volumes of Mikdamini on the subject of freedom of choice. We're going to go right into the middle of the classic one, which is on page 111, if I remember rightly. Let's go back. Wow, memory. Uh, 111, I hope we can be off, but we're going to look at page 117. And here he talks, the, the, a, well, sorry, a, a lie, page 113. Uh, and here he talks about Chinuch Ba'aliyah. Chinuch Ba'aliyah. And that's really going to be the foundation, one of the foundations of the, the topic we're going to touch on tonight, or probably two, in over two weeks. Kinnah Valiyah, and let me read to you a little bit. Masmorn on me calls them. What comes out from all of this is Shazachia Saina Shal Adam. There's a chusing of each and every one of us. Einan Hamitzas Hamaisin Tavim Shinis Chanach Bahem are not in the mitzvahs that we were educated in. Okay? And the Mabachiras Maha Tavis Lavad. But in your Bechira, your, your freedom of choice, the choices you made. Solely and uniquely, but not the stuff that you were taught of when you were when you when you when you when you grew up. Because Hashem is chanach boy, eno elo hachonos mokam mechudas bechira. So of course we're all familiar with Rabbi Dessa saying that mechudas bechira. That is to say, that the he gives the example of two two fighting armies coming together. Let's say the take any historical point. Let's say the let's say the Yom Kippur War. The point of conflict was at the Sinai, right? And then, of course, initially the Egyptians pushed the Israelis back, and then, of course, the Egyptians pushed them back. But the point of conflict is where they actually meet. 
But what lies behind the front line? So when the, initially the, the Egyptians pushed the Israelis back in the surprise attack, and we might argue cowardly attack on Yom Kippur, and they might argue tactically brilliantly uh, attack, brilliant attack. But when they pushed the, the, the Jews back, then that area, which had previously been under Israeli control, is now under Egyptian control. There's no conflict there. The new point of conflict is over there. That's where the fight begins. And if they push them back further, which I think initially they did, and again, that's a new point of conflict. Now they've, this is this whole area which is now under Egyptian control. He says it's the same when it comes to Yu Yitz and Iran Yu Yitzhak place. For the vast majority of us, and the vast majority of our our actions and our interactions, we exercise no freedom of choice whatsoever. Freedom of choice demands a minimum of two. Does it not? If I tell you to leave this room by a door, you have a choice. There are two doors, actually three. So you can leave this room by a door. But if there's only one door, and I tell you to leave, then what choice do you have? I mean, assuming you're going to listen to me. And why wouldn't you listen to me? But assuming you're going to listen to me, then what? you've only got one choice. So the basic ingredient that you need, numerical ingredient you need for choice, is two. And of course, more gives you more choice. But if you've only got one, then you've got no choice whatsoever. Okay. So therefore, where do we have choice? When our Yetzirah and our Yetzirah type conflict, come into conflict with each other, that's where you have choice. But behind the front line of your good self and behind the front line of your bad self, you exercise no freedom of choice whatsoever. It would never occur to anybody sitting at this table to go and mug an old lady when she goes outside, and goes outside her bed. Well, we have a lawyer here, so... <laughs> um, <laughs> excluding the lawyers. Um, um, and steal her, her, meager, uh, her meager savings. But because of who and what we are, because of our, our chinuch and our families and our, you know, our, well, everything that makes us who we are, uh, that's miles behind the front line of our good self. But speaking Lashon Hora, listening to Lashon Hora, mm, <laughs> that's a little bit... I find this as a rabbi, I get this all the time, very difficult. People come to me with problems and what people have said and what they've done. No, no, sorry, I shouldn't listen to this one, but it sounds very good. What did you do? Um, and, and you get the idea. So the, the, that's the point of Nakudas up here for me, because I'm, that's the only, that's the only point, of course, for everything else I've perfected. Um, that's the point of Nakudas up here. Now, there, there are so many things behind the front line of my good self that I would never, of my bad self, that I would never consider doing. I mean, staying up every day, you know, Shani uh, Hamisha Shani, not so much. Not, not so much into that. I find it very difficult to stay awake, you know, any time. Really. Um, you get to a certain age, and you know what I'm talking about. Well, you don't, because you're all young. But you get the idea. So he says, that, so that's the Nakudas of Bechira. Okay, that's the point of, of Bechira. But he says, what you get as a result of your Chinuch only determines where your Bechira starts. So if you're brought up to keep Shabbos, I mean, compare and contrast yourself to a Balchur, classic Balchur. Now, He's got to fight. I mean, I knew somebody once went to, to Orson. I think it was Orson there a long time ago from Glasgow. Glasgow is a remarkably anti religious community, most left of it. Uh, and he came to uh, he came to Aristotle for a summer vacation, did all the stuff you're supposed to do, you know, hang gliding, scuba diving, going to Masada, you know, whatever that's really all about. Eventually, he came to the Castle Marovi. And arrived at the Castle Marovi, he was kidnapped by one of these, these rabbis. And he ended up either Orson Bear or Richard Sarah, I can't remember exactly what. Now for him, his the big the big big choice was to go to a shear on a brainwash me. Anybody sitting at the table think oh, maybe I should go to Shear? Do you brainwash? Crazy, right? For him that was a big challenge. And then eventually it was, you know, put on to fill him. <coughs> well, I put on to fill him. And no choice over that one. And Razar Vanessa says, that's why Mitzvah Guerreras, Mitzvah Vera Guerreras, there because when you push the front line back, then the territory which was under control of the negative or the positive self now becomes control under control of the other one, and therefore there is no Bechira whatsoever. Both ways. In fact, I got a, a, an email yesterday, yesterday from somebody I respect enormously, and uh, I'm really quite jealous because this person was a lot more of a Yiddish guy to me. She's called Rivison Spora Heller. God bless my heart. It's very embarrassing that a woman knows far more than you. Sorry? Uh, could be. Uh, her um, her son-in-law was one of the people attacked in that uh, terrible um, massacre in the oh, the Harnoff show yeah. thing. Yeah. Probably have the Gimme Shiram this this week, etc. You know, the Shylock should choose his guns or not, etc. 
central circuit for the switch. You know, because what happened was there was two Arabs, Palestinian Arabs, who worked in the local McCullough. Everybody knew them. And they came in, one had a cleaver, you know, the square or rectangular blade, for chopping up bones and stuff like that. And, uh, and one had a gun. Which meant you couldn't get near the guy with the cleaver, because uh, he was shooting people who tried to. And it was, a, it was terrible. Her son in law was one of the people attacked. And this, I think, seven or eight year old boy was there when his daddy was hit in the head with the cleaver. So the Shiloh was. Anyway, so she wrote me a Shiloh. Um, a whole interesting thing about um, one of her Talmudites who's having a big crisis of Amuna. And she says she feels out of her depth. And she asked me if I can answer all the questions. So there is um, uh, somewhere online a letter by somebody who's gone off the Derek to his rabbi. And it's really high quality Apicursus. Very high quality Apicursus. It deals with the Kuzari's proof, if you're familiar with that. I'm not going to go into that because no, it's hard no. Sorry? Very no, it's not. In Eretz Yisrael, um, I know this because my son, is, my big Talmud Chazan son, told me this many years ago. There are sites, websites and stuff like that, who are supportive sites for people going off the derech. Um, Okay, and but I think there are more, and it's very high quality. I mean, it's yeah. serious Talmud Chacham. Don't say that's brother. He's the guy behind it. Who's brother? Don't say that. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so yeah, so that, the problem is what do you do when you go up against somebody who's you know whose brain is greater than you know all of you put together. And he's saying that it's not true. Well, the steers between Chazal and Chazal, etc., etc. The more of the steers and the and things, and boom. And so I looked at this briefly uh, yesterday, and you know the MS is, of course, I mean, way off the subject. Forgive me. Um, it, I actually, maybe it's a pure guy, but I think I can answer all the questions that she needs answered. The question is, do I have time for this? And as I've told you a million times, I say, my Hashem, I can present evidence to open minds. I can't present evidence, present evidence to open minds. She's asking a question. That I'm asking That's right. So the question is, am I going to waste hours and hours? Because uh, I, I said I'm behind this thing, um, typing this thing, motion before, um, typing. Uh, I, I was supposed to be doing all sorts of stuff on the computer this week, but I, with the hot air that blows in here. And uh, looking, I'll get all sorts of really sore eyes and all really couldn't see a thing. I'm way, way behind my articles that I write and, my, and I'm writing a book, as you know, the moment and stuff like that. But Rebbe's in Heller, I'm a, I'm a huge Chassidah, that's the word Chassid. Is it Chassid or Lady? I don't know. Uh, huge, well, actually, a friend of the family. Um, whatever, whatever the correct expression is, um, a huge fan, let's keep it as that. And if, but the Charlotte is, am I going to waste all this time for a lady, uh, for this young lady's um, questions if they're not questions? Because then I can give them the most brilliant answers in the world. But nobody's actually listening. What's behind the front line of a Yitzharat or the Yitzhar type? And sometimes it's very, very sophisticated what's there. But he says that where you stand in 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 in, in your life is not that's not you what you've been taught and what you do automatically. All of us here we put on the film and all of us here we keep Shabbos, we do all exercise. Anybody here over Shabbos? So it's just easy peasy. In fact, we love it. But for somebody who's a complete beginner, if you go to these sorts of people, it's a big, big shiloh. Shiloh. Anyway, so let me read you what he says here. The, then the real person, again, shows a heel slave shall love him. The, the level, the, the struggle, the, the heroism, that's not the real translation, but I think that's what he means. The heroism of any individual Jew, in the mitzvah's and license to live, which is kind of common. It's not in the, in the, in the, in the mitzvah's uh, that you've been educated and you've been brought up to keep, because that's not you. You, you do it automatically. In a real sense, and I'm sure of that website, and these people would say, yeah, absolutely, you've been brainwashed, yeah, absolutely. Oh, I can't resist telling the story. Oh, so I, can't, so I can see, this something's happened in our show. Have you noticed this? You no. know, I've, got, I've got this all prepared. Look, I have notes. I worked on this. And I just go, and the shear's over, and I've said absolutely nothing. I can't resist telling them. Um, funnily enough, um, this happened again to me this, uh, just recently. There's a, a lovely young lady called, and what's an interesting name? Maybe she's going to see this and be embarrassed. Oh, I'm going to tell you. Yeah. Lovely young lady called Paris Nestor. And Paris um, came to the Five Town um, to various programs that were running here. And she became a, uh, came to, used to come to my share, but she's told me that. She's now in the Bay Richland. Exceptional young lady. And uh, she asked me just an interesting show. And she used to be an actress. 
and, uh, and then she became drunk. So she gave up quite a lot because actors and actresses, that's, that's all the audience horror can possibly up, you know, a career in the video. Um, and she gave all that up for a turn that's just exceptionally I think I've made quite a few who have given up that world for our world, and they are very special. Anyway, she wanted to know how I get into public speaking. I mean, she's obviously talented. I'm sure she could become a great mechanicist in her own right. She wanted to know how it happened. And so I had to think, how did I get into giving share in public speaking? And then as I started writing, I said, no, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, and started, so how was the story? So I was a, at, uh, in Glasgow, at Glasgow University, which I was uh, enjoying not a lot, and all I was interested in was Tara and Mitzvah. Um, going to sharing, and so I wasn't doing particularly well at university. Um, and I left after my first year because I wanted to go to Gates of Yeshiva. Um, but growing up in Glasgow, there wasn't a lot of chinuch in Glasgow available. And I used to go and, and learn with private rabbis, but there was no yeshiva, not no yeshiva there was nothing at all, there were no Jewish schools. Oh, there was a Jewish elementary school, which I did not go to. Um, uh, and it actually was written inside the constitution of the elementary school. No rabbis are allowed to set foot over the front door. Mm -hmm. So it was an anti-religious Jewish school. Right. I've actually been there and spoken, so I broke the rule there. Okay, yeah. so the rabbis are trying. Anyway, so I, I, off I went to Manchester and learned for a year. Uh, there's a great rabbi called Rabbi Balkan. If you want to read Indian magazine this week, he's in it in the cartoon section. Don't ask me what, how I know that. Um, anyway, so, and uh, so I was in Yeshiv for a year, and my ex, a lot of my chevra were still at university. We were having a, a Shabbaton, or a weekend away, and they asked me, would I, would I come and speak? And I said, yes. And this is my first time ever speaking. Of course, I have absolutely nothing to say. I didn't know how to speak. And I brought another friend of mine, also from Glasgow, who lived in Gateshead. And there's more than one Glasgow Jew, you see. And he's, again, one of my dearest and closest friends. And called Bernard Joseph, and he's an architect. And he's very different to me. Very different. I, I mean, I love the man dearly. I've always loved the man dearly. But he's, I mean, he's, it's, you know, opposites attract. I'm shy and retiring. And he is, is, is loud and, no, the other way back. Uh, he, I, I'm loud and extrovert, and he's very quiet and introvert. Very gentle to architect. So I did most of the talking over Shabbos, whether they wanted me to speak or not. Um, and then Shabbos Shudas, it was his turn. And uh, and he stood there, and he spoke very gently, whatever he said, I can't remember what he said, but I do remember a question that he was asked. And the question was, don't you think that bringing your children up in Gateshead, you're brainwashing them? Okay. Well, what would you say? <laughs> yeah. Hmm. So he said, yes, of course I am. And then he said, and I thought this was brilliant. Immaculate. No, he said, but I'd rather I brainwash my children than somebody else did. Mm. Isn't that clever? That's so <coughs> damn, that's so brilliant. Because don't think that you, I mean, you hear people say this, I won't bring my, <laughs> now it's become a total joke. I'm not going to tell my child what gender he is. It is. In case it wants to be a different gender. And in case you ever want to get brain stupid, how do you get it? Anyway, but um, but basically, people say when it was back in sort of like less stupid land, uh, and that was that I'm going to let my child choose when he grows up whether he wants to believe. I'm not going to enforce religion on him. Yeah. Now, where's he going to live until he grows up? When he's until he's 21, where are you going to keep him in total isolation that he doesn't get access to anybody's opinions or anybody's views? If you read the New York Times. Then of course you're going to have a perspective which is given to you. If you watch, you know, the news, CNN, <laughs> then of course you're going to be given, you know, sort of that's that was uh, totally unpolitical, uh, etc. Or I mean, or I can't think, or Fox News. I mean, to be balanced, I can be, I can be balanced. Um, then of course you're going to get a right wing perspective. But to say that somebody is going to grow up not having any, it's absolute nonsense. He said, I'd rather that I. Uh, brainwashed than somebody else did. And somebody else said, that's what it says, we're all brainwashed. How are you for brainwashing, right? So he says, but therefore that's not the real you. When does the real you emerge? So he says, so he says, you're in the this point of clash. That's only your, your background, your chinuch, your parenting, etc. That will determine where it starts. But the start, the fight, is the real you. When you start to make the chinuch, he says, which you've not been given. 
Maskar Aliyah Magia Lamacham Khalish or Kaima Mitzvah Chinuch. And the Madriga, so you're putting on to fill in and you're keeping Shabbos and you're keeping Kashrus and Zarat and Shabbos and all that sort of stuff. Call a Kabod to your parents and to your Mechanchim. And I suppose if you've worked this out logically to their parents and their Mechanchim, etc., etc. That's right, 100%. So where are you? Where did where did you and where did they kick in? So listen. Sorry. Oh, oh so it's interesting you say Avraham Avinu. So Avraham Avinu doesn't have. Oh, does he? Yeah. Mm. Yes and no. Where did he have his kid? No. No. Mm. When his mother takes him out of the cave, when he's the bears, she says, "What age he was? Say, whatever. When he's taken out of the cave, four or three, he's taken out of the cave." Uh, where his mother, his Menekes, was uh, was uh, um, hiding him from from Nimrod. Where did you send them? To the Shemesh Shem Ba'ira. Right. Now, no parent in their life, in the setting of Jewish parent, has ever sent their kid to a school unless they are convinced that it's the least worst of all the alternatives. <laughs> <laughs> and telling everyone else can say it's the best, right? But you know, but of course. But the least worst is the only the, the best school is not here in the principal. That's right. Until then, it was just like elected. I know. So, okay, so why was there Shiva Shem and Ever? Why, why did he send them there? Elected. Okay, but he went there to learn. But he elected, but once you go there and you you sit at the foot of a Rebbe, and what the Rebbe is going to give you, and you're going to battle yourself to his dad. After all, we're talking about Nobi. So he was the first person. There was a Noach before him who was a son of Shem and an Ever and said, fine. But there was, what's Avram's difference? Avram is the first person to discover Shem himself. Fine. It's like a child, Mahavdil, who has a natural affinity for the violin. But then you take him, I hope, you know, to a teacher who's going to tell him how to refine that. Avram Avinu had a natural affinity for God. But then you're going to have to take somebody who's going to refine that, but then you have a chemist as well. Interesting stuff. I, 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 if we had more time, I'll tell you what the Nicole uh, Zavovs has to say on the subject. But that's one of my favorite deep bits. But anyway, let's read on. Uh, so he says, So therefore, the, all that goes to the mitzvahs of those who are mechanachim. The mashah meiduhu al madrigas mechiras hazuh. Who let go, it's not level. Gevar ha'vinu b'amar makanim esech tzayin. It's already explained elsewhere. He explains this actually quoted three times. In the Mishmash. Mashah gilano ha'gon r'b nosah si finkel b'chesad of our pasha's light. What r'b nosah si finkel says in the pasha's light. So because I've gone off too many tangents, I'll tell you the south side. And he says something astonishing. Now, we know that the whole story of Lot is that uh, we know that he his relationship to Avram Avinu, what's his relationship to Avram Avinu? Nephew, brother. Nephew, brother, Lot, and Talmud. Right, all three things, okay? So that's, keep that in mind. And then there are four daughters he has all together, according to one sheet, another sheet says five. Two married um, and two not married. Those are the ones who I've been doing a lot of research into at the moment. They're... Uh, this chapter of my, my new book on the on, on Noshin Kitkanias. Um, but anyway, the two daughters who di- who, who eventually uh, are the mothers of Mo- Ammon and Moab. Fine. So, um, but there's another, the Medrash talks about another daughter, whether it's one of the married ones, I'm not sure, but basically a poor man came to to Saddam and she gives him food uh, and offers him hospitality, which was a capital offense in Saddam. If you find that hard to imagine, it's not too hard to imagine. Uh, I remember seeing on a sign in, on a wall in, in Vienna, in Austria, uh, somebody spray painted Auslander Raus. Auslander Raus. Foreigners out. And of course, that's, that's exactly it. A very, very German perspective. Right? Anybody who's not German is, uh, is, is an Auswarf and, and should be thrown out of the place. Fine. So that was actually the law there. She takes the person, she gives them the hospitality, and now everybody knows she's put in trial. She's sentenced to die, and then sentenced to die in the most horrible way to be killed by insects or eating or singing or whatever it is. It takes a long time, and Lot has to watch this himself. Um, straight after that, two other strangers come to, uh, to Saddam, of course the Malachim, and he begs them, he begs them to accept his hospitality. He takes them into, the, into his house, and we all know the story, they're actually Malachim. Fine, fine, fine. And he goes to the nth degree to protect them when the people want to take them out and do terrible things to them. And, um, and that's the story. Fine. After that, taking up the Rabbi Desley, May Atamish Masha Oma Atika, Mauritius Yuteskov Tesh, by Yiska Elohim Esavran. So when 
uh, Sodom is going to be destroyed. The Pope says, the Yisker of Akim of Sodom, the Ash, uh, sorry, of Aram, of Hashem remembers Aram. And Rashi says, what did he remember? Because then he says Lot. Nisker shall you Lot, you dear Shasora, Ishter shall Avram. He remembers, he, rem- he remembered that Sarah, his sister, was the um, uh, the wife of Avram. The Shoma and he heard that Avram and Mitzrayim, so Shoma Avram and Mitzrayim al Sarah achlesi, and Avram had said about Sarah and Mitzrayim that she's my sister, not my wife. But Lo Gila and he didn't he didn't sneak, he didn't snitch, he didn't reveal the fact. So Ramosi Finkel says this is astonishing. I'll actually read this. Who mafil shall open God will kiss the mysterious nefesh. If you're looking for a, a reason to save Lot from the destruction of Saddam, how about the fact that having watched his daughter killed slowly, torturously, appallingly by these insects, he's still willing to offer chesed and hospitality to the these two people that come to the town? Oh, but instead, it's the fact that he didn't inform on his brother, his his, his sorry, his uh, brother-in-law. Uh, his Rebbe, um, his wife's husband, um, his uncle, the fact that she, it was a pretense that her husband and wife, which means there would only be, as he said here, with a, with a nod and a wink, that would be enough to get Abram killed, Sarah would be taken to marry to Parai, and he would be the brother-in-law of the richest and most powerful man in the world. Brother-in-law of Jeff Bezos. Um, and that sort of stuff. That is enough to save them? He says, of course it was. But he says, because anybody who came into contact with Avram Avinu, who was teaching um, Emes of Yaakov, Chesed Lavron, Chesed is the, is, the, is the nature, is the embodiment of, of, of Rom. Anybody who stands next to any pure energy, you stand next to a bonfire, you become warm. You stand next to an iceberg, I've never done this, but I think you can, you can safely say you become cold. If you stand Chas Vashon next to a radioactive isotope, you become radioactive. And if you stood next to Avram, just to be, I don't know if you've ever had this experience, but think if you've ever been Zoycha, to be actually in the, in the well, you certainly were, um, in, in contact with a real tzaddik, poof, you're, I, just, I, I remember I used to go and see my Rav, the Gates of Rav, and Gates said, and, um, and there was such an aliyah to my Nishan. I mean, it's, poof, I was the best Yehudi Yoni you can imagine. I, I could imagine myself being simply by sitting next to my Rav. And I went back to Manchester. Manchester was hardly full of, you know, there was, and is to this day, a wonderful game full of exceptional Jews. But I felt something special. If you were Zoycha to be in the, in the, in the, in the company of the Manchester Rosh Hashim, the Katsari Kodesh Libroch, poof, you just naturally went up. If you came into contact with Abram, you went poof, you went up. And Abram was cousin. So guess what happened to your level of chesed? You became radioactive next to radioactivity, you became cold next to coldness, you became hot next to the heat, and you became a, a bal chesed next to the uh, exponent um, of chesed. Boom, that was, that was Lot. So that's what happens to the real Lot. The real Lot was when he's fighting his own fight. And when was that? And that's when he's got the chance of just a little nod or a wink. He married. Sorry? And no, I'm not saying it's, that would be I negative, mean, but I'm saying positively. No, we're talking about the positive thing. There is no positivity. Ultimately, well, I'm not letting the read because I'm going to read to you what he says here anyway. But the big shtick is that Avram, so what is Lot's in the sign? So we, we know what Lot's real nature is because what's he doing? What's a Baal Chesed doing? Living in Sodom, where you can't do chesed. What's he doing in the first place? Yeah, because he can make money there. And he likes money. And after the fight between his rhyme and Avram Avinu's rhyme, then he looks there and says, I can make money there. There's lots of sheep. Good place to make money. He loves money. And to, for somebody who loves money, then to be have the possibility of being the brother in law of the richest man in the world, that's quite the sign. And he beat it. He beat it. That's him. That's the guy. And this was as seductive as for a Baal Taibe, that's what, um, I want to talk about that, uh, for a Baal Gaiva to be whatever that is, but money to be, that's the big, big sign. So he said, in a roiv in the other, in gam chun choi le mitzvah and maizen toivim, the vast majority of them, if we're educated in mitzvahs and maizen toivim, yasem mitzvahs and noshim and 
that only graduates us to be mitzvahs and oshim and amodim, the Apostle says in Malachi. In Kenya, the Kodesh Baruch Hu, the Kodesh Baruch Hu, just like, oh, this is now, that's why I told you to hold fire. The Rosh doesn't, re- doesn't withhold reward for you. You're still going to get reward for doing it. <laughs> it's not the real you, but the Rosh is nice. Right? He's got Rechamalas on you. It's fact that you're doing mitzvahs, you still get reward. It's not the real you. But he says, the Gan Ba'ad Zer Yishlom Lehem, Avo Miko Mokim Kenyan Madrigas, listen to the Rosh but Kenyan Madrigas, achieving a madriga, achieving a level, getting to a, 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 a level of, of refinement which you've never had before, the Haina Bechira Sataiv, your own Bechira Sataiv, the Mat Kama'at She'in Lehem, that's as though well, you don't have. So you get the reward for doing the mitzvah. So you're not achieving anything. Kila Osid Rechoikas Mo'ed Yagilam Lechom Asayyiz, because you've never fought the Yitzhahara. Ashri Adam Ashe Yishtamash Bechinuchoi Hatoi Mitzaris Achon. Happy is the person who is um, Zoicha to use the background and the Chinuch and the education and the environment and the shul and all the stuff that you and I have, um, have been Zoicha to have, um, as your basis to climb. By that bit, you've got to be climbing. <coughs> if you were just born halfway up the mountain and stayed there, you did nothing. Look, I'm halfway up the mountain, and you're down there. Yeah, because you're born there. What did you do? You got to go higher. But I'm not going to like a sliding scale. Go on. Because, for instance, um, cautious. Right? So, of course, no one's going to, you know, be straight. But then there could be, oh, it's a hechsher. Oh, someone. Hundred percent. So then there does it's it's it's, it's still cautious, but there's. Certain things where there still can be a conflict. Absolutely, and don't forget what we said before. I mean, what Avi was mentioning before. I mean, the, the person in charge of the of the support group for people who want to leave Yiddishkeit is a huge talmud chacham, or the son of a, in, in the and the son of. I mean, there's no contrary. You can. It's that's why Rabbi Dessa says, and that's we get to that in Kenikalim. Mitzugeres, mitzugeres, mitzugeres. There is no, he says, standing still. You're either going up or you're going down. This is a huge mistake. Never think, I mean, Moshe, but it's a huge mistake that people make. But I can, you know, I'm quite happy on that level. Sorry? Plateauing. Plateauing. I'm up a plateau. No, you're not plateau. That's a huge mistake. There's such a thing as gravity. You're in a world, what's it called? Olam. You're either going up or you're going down. Anyway, so here's Rabbi Desno in page 131 um, uh, of uh, Keragino. And again, it's Chinuch Ma'umadrega, which is the same theme. So he says, um, the vast majority of us are Midas, our character traits, and our Hanaga, and our approach in life. In pre it's the is the fruit of how you were brought up. So there's nature and nurture the same as all the base. You know, we all have natures, but the clever mechanic finds the nature of the person and, and sets them on the path in which that nature is perfectly equipped to lead them to the, to the conclusion of that path. That was a very good sentence, incidentally. Yes, that's it. Anyway, kan b'mavuna he says, is connected with what rochah, the way to go. Akol komasha odam leimen misidvoso mamagiv albrias. It includes everything on your path in life. The people you, you bump into, what you see in life, has an effect on you. Remember, I told you the story about the Satmar lady who spoke Italian. You know the story. A very, um, a very, very, I heard this actually, I said this over, um, a story I heard from the Manchester Rosh Hashiva. I said it over when I was speaking at Satmar um, uh, event in, uh, in uh, Borough Park. And the son of the Manchester Rosh Hashiva who lives in, in Borough Park was there. And he said, I got it slightly wrong, but it was very, very excited to meet him. Anyway, so basically it's a true story of uh, a lady, a Satmar lady, who had a brain tumor. Now it was a benign tumor. Sorry, tumor. A benign tumor, uh, but this, uh, but even if you've got a benign tumor, it's going to kill you unless you cut it out because it's going to squish the brain and all that sort of stuff. And brain surgery is, you know, zelop shoot, as they say. So anyway, so this lady has the operation, and her husband sitting outside with a little toy bed, dancing like crazy. Um, and out comes the the doctor, um, Italian American fellow, and he says, Mr. Captain Alan Bogan. Um, Mr. Actually, if he's Samar, he's called Weiss. Um, so, <laughs> I don't know if my wife's Samar from Hungary, she was called Weiss. Anyway, so, 
very evil. Evil man. Oh, sorry, I can't do it. Anyway, soft call, soft. Um, so basically, because I said, uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Veit once said uh, the, the operation, Baruch Hashem, Veit, Baruch Hashem, uh, was, uh, was very successful. And uh, I didn't know your wife spoke Italian. Is it Boof? He says, um, I just come back from Kiev Tony. So, <laughs> um, so the case, he said, Boof? He said, um, your wife, she speaks fluent Italian. My wife? Um, he says, yes, he's, uh, I'm an Italian American. And when we were, I was operating in your wife, I mean, even though she was uh, unconscious, but she started to speak in fluent Italian. Uh, doctor, my guy, she's not speaking such good English already. So, so, uh, that's what's done. Anyway, the kids are, this is a true story, and, 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 and Drisha Bakakira, investigation was made and discovered an actual fact that when she was born, her mother was seriously ill as a consequence of either physical or mental illness, I'm not sure. And somebody had to look after this baby for about nine months before the mother was able to look after her properly and normally, um, or naturally, I should say. And it turned out that the nurse who was brought in to look after her was Italian. And she sang to this baby in Italian and spoke to the baby in Italian. And a bit like the computer, you know, what's on the hard disk, you know, is always on the hard disk. That's why if you lose if you lose information, you can go to some or it costs you a lot of money, but there are companies will find, you know, that there's a, a shadow of it and they can recover it somehow or other. Well your brain's a bit like a hard disk. And what happened was that she had heard as a little baby, nine months old. Of course, as you know, those research that shows the babies inside the womb recognize their mother's voices. And if the mother sings to them, and they did the experiments, you know, particular um, lullabies, then the child recognizes the lullaby because you can see, you can see by putting a little electrode, the child's reacting to the lullaby which she heard inside the womb. And not only that, if somebody else sings a lullaby, it's not the same reaction as the mother singing the lullaby because they recognize the mother's voice when the mother is born. So this little baby, little baby, Chasida uh, Shemino, um, she was heard Italian, and it was there. When he was taking, as it were, almost like reconnecting the circuits in the computer, doing whatever he was doing, because some people say that, you know, a brain is just a sense hard, horribly crude, but a computer made of meat. Um, then he was reconnecting the circuits, out came this this uh, this, uh, this disc and, uh, and this thing played. So you, what you get from your background, that poof, is there. Well, then where is you? So he says, um, so it's a rachov. Everything that applies, applies to you in your life, that chinuch is connected to rachov, and then every road you're on, everything that happens to you on that journey is going to impact on you. Okay. Now listen to this. This is scary. It's possible for a person. If, and who would not want, as my friend said, I'd rather I brainwash my son than somebody else did. If he lives in a great environment, and Baruch Hashem, we are very zayicha to be at a, a wonderful kehillah, and particularly in a, good, a great time in a wonderful kehillah. Remember, it's not just a place, but it's a time as well. Lots of young, good families wanting to, or B'nai Aliyah, it's possible if you're brought up in such an environment with such families, with such parents and dads like you sitting around this table, to reach a level as a consequence, your children should reach a level of tzidkus, metzionis. I mean, wow, outstanding. I mean, you don't see me in a class. That you could bring children up who are so firm and so attached to Torah and mitzvahs that they would be moist and nefesh. Abel Madriga's Zeish. That's Rabbi Dessa, gentlemen, just reading. It's scary. Beyosa Madriga's Mekonechas. Since it's as a consequence of the Madriga that you were given, Eneno Meshkotas al Atmusa Hamita Shalom. That doesn't reveal the real person at all. I mean, imagine, let's travel back in time. I'm teaching, I teach for uh, Shearing uh, in a seminary in um, uh, Bensonhurst in Brooklyn. Superb seminary called Elion, fabulous class of really, really good girls. And so, that, and Monday I teach two uh, history classes, and then and then I teach Al Shirk and uh, and Sharon Kosofsky. Right, so this is I'm finding it very challenging. Um, <coughs> uh, which I teach on Wednesday, which I taught today. Anyway, Bekitzer, 
he said, um, the, the, this idea of the serious nefesh, I'm teaching the modern period of Jewish history. If you know anything about the modern period, that's 1640. And so the other teacher is teaching us, they got the 20th century. They wanted to talk about the founding of the state of Israel and Zionism and all that sort of stuff. I get 1640. Um, thank you. Uh, Gezeris, etc., etc. How many Jews were, gave up their life and died of Kiddush Hashem in the most horrible way? Afal Pekin, I'm just saying what Rabbi Destin says. Afal Pekin, even though a Jew, you could find a Jew who's willing to die of Kiddush Hashem. The fear of Nefesh Mamish, but still that is only the Yosem Madrigus Mechamechus as a consequence of who and what he or she was brought up to be, and still not the real thing. After all, that's what Lot just did. That's what he said earlier in Hechel Kalaf. Lot was willing to give up his life to do the mitzvah of Chesed. And Madrigus and Sirius Nefesh. But that's still not the real Lot. Hmm. In Eina Mashkafas El Atmos Amitis Shal Odom. Medregosoi, how mitos, mishtakafes, be oisom, how maisim, and ovoes, mitok, etzem penimi also. You see the real person in challenges <coughs> and, and fights that he has that flow from the real guy. Asher Shom, who nilchem in Yitzra and Yechet Shalom. Well, he has to fight in his own Yitzhahara. Voloi be oisom maisim, asher hukulabe. It's not the things that he does automatically. Or because he's, as it were, been brainwashed to do it by his communities. So next week, as we have uh, uh, run out of time for this week, um, as you can see, this is uh, quite a big ship. It's very, very interesting. What comes next, guys, is really, really good. Shock. How to get to the real deal, how to get to the real you, to maximize the real you, to realize the real you, and to bring it to its fruition. So this is part one. I'll see you next week.